There are certain things I can't live without, uh, beyond the obvious ones. So we're on the same wavelength. I can't live without music. Uh, so whenever I go into a room, I put music on. Uh, I come from a generation uh, when, you know, it was the Beatles and it was classical music. And I went to a Jay-Z concert recently, so I'm sort of moving with the times. I have kids who are 21 uh, and uh, 24. Uh, and so I'm, through them, I, I keep up with the times a bit. But I find classical music to be mood-inducing composers have different influence on me. So if I'm about to go and deliver a major speech, uh, and uh, it's in a, you know, in a passionate uh, uh, tone, uh, then I might listen to one of uh, the great uh, symphonies of uh, Beethoven. And, uh, uh, and if it is a rather gentler one, I might listen to the Sixth Symphony. So it's rather, it's rather interesting. And yet, if I'm relaxing, then uh, you know, I might um, listen to a Bach cello suite or, you know, a Mozart piano concerto. Interestingly, I've started to uh, read music just in the last couple of years and to try to play the piano, which I'm finding quite uh, challenging. The other thing uh, that I find I really need is language. I like language in all its forms. When I got to Britain, I didn't speak English. And yet, uh, 10 years later, I was president of the Debating Society at Oxford. And you learn a lot in, you know, in, in, in those years. But part of the explanation is that I have a real love for language and, and for words. And that translates itself into poetry, uh, which I love in many different languages. I love it in, in English, of course, but also in French and in Italian and in Hebrew. Um, it, uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, perhaps because of my early schooling in this uh, uh, religious school of St. John the Baptist, where they taught you uh, poetry by rote, I have a very retentive memory. There are certain books that have uh, marked me even you know, decades later. And I wonder how many of, uh, of this current generation have read um, uh, 100 Years of Solitude, you know, of Gabriel Garcia. Uh, Marquez, or a very much smaller book, The Bridge of San Luis Rey, of, by Thornton Wilder. And these, these are books that greatly, uh, greatly marked me. Uh, I sometimes go back to leaf through them. It's quite interesting that uh, there's a Dickens revival now, because it's the 200th anniversary, I think, of his, of his birth. Dickens, as it turns out, wrote not only excellent uh, novels, but was also a very important social reformer. I was in a communist country, and I was amazed to see a picture of Dickens alongside uh, Marx, Lenin, and Stalin, all, you know, all framed uh, together. Sport, can't live without sport. I play tennis, I swim, uh, I jog. Um, that's a you know a very necessary part of my existence, and then travel I do too much of, uh, but I do enjoy going to to new places. And so, I suppose if uh, if you looked at uh, how much time my outside interests might take up if I decided to do only that, I wouldn't have enough time for them. <laughs> I'm Ronald Cohen, and you're watching Epiphany. <laughs>